What's happening, people? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So, in this week's video, we're going to be talking about two Canon telephoto zoom lenses. One, a tried and true beast from the DSLR era, and the other, a sleeker, lighter, more cutting edge lens designed for newer mirrorless Canon cameras. So, kind of like a kind of like a Ford v Ferrari sort of scenario, except not it's it's not at all like that. But today, we are going to be drawing some contrast between these two lenses in terms of build and design, optics, the technology going on here, and how that gives way to performance differences. I also have a couple notes about like experience and workflow going from one of these lenses to the other. Because although it's really easy for me to sit here and say that newer is always better, I do happen to kind of be on the end of that scale that's loving all of these new mirrorless advancements that have come with that. But I don't want to like permanently put myself in that box. I'm always willing to be pleasantly surprised. So let's be proven wrong today. Now this video isn't about proving anyone right or anyone wrong as fun as that that is it's pretty much going to function as like an overview of this lens, but I did find it important to draw a couple of parallels to the DSLR precursor of this lens, even though they don't match up like exactly on paper. So what do I mean by that? Well, the first striking difference you may have noticed already is we have totally different focal length and aperture ranges. Canon clearly saw an opportunity there to jam some extra millimeterage in the mirrorless version. The EF version was a 100 to 400, f4 to 5.6 but now the focal lengths are 100 to 500 and that aperture range 4 5 to 7 1. Canon has rolled out a 100 to 400 rf mount lens but it's not really in the same class as these two but it's a little more middle of the shelf a little more consumer it's not going to have all the bells and whistles that these do but this rf 100 to 500 is truly the most comparable to the ef version even though they're not technically the same so if you're already thinking that 100 millimeters is going to slightly decrease the speed or light intake of this lens? The answer is yes. Again, on paper, the EF 100 to 400 is going to be slightly faster in terms of light transmission than the 100 to 500, but that's sensible, I think, considering the extra zoomage of the mirrorless lens. Just to break it down for you here, I've charted out the minimum and maximum aperture you can achieve at a couple of different focal lengths on the lens here. And interestingly, it seems like the minimum aperture is affected proportionally in this way. Another quick thing I just kind of want to insert in here is when I was testing these two lenses side by side, I was testing them on the same body, the EOS R8, and I'm trying to do some side by sides and I couldn't help but notice that the focal lengths didn't match up exactly. So say I'm trying to frame up a shot and I took one at 400 millimeters on the 100 to 400, the RF actually needed to be a little bit wider according to the R8. I think it read something like 383 millimeters. Though conversely, I'm trying to match a shot that is say, maybe 30 feet away, and I actually had to zoom to around 428 millimeters on the RF lens to match the 400 millimeter shot. So just by that logic, I would assume there's a sweet spot in the middle there, maybe between like 15 and 20 feet where 400 millimeters on the RF lens matches the 400 on an EF lens. But I digress. A couple more optical notes going on here. I can tell the coatings in this 100 to 500 are slightly updated compared to its EF cousin. And also the front and rear elements are fluorine coated, which is really just another layer of protection, but also makes the cleaning and maintenance of the 100 to 500 a lot easier to do. Layout design wise, they are surprisingly similar considering the difference in focal lengths there, but the RF version has one fewer element than this 100 to 400. All right, that's it for optic stuff. Now let's talk about some build and design notes here. So I'm sure there are a couple of things that you can see just looking at these two lenses, but let's talk about the one thing that you're not going to be able to see, the weight between these two lenses. In my opinion, one of the most significant changes is RF 100 to 500 is just feathery light compared to the EF shaved off more than a half a pound coming in at a flat three pounds, even considering the extra millimeterage that is going on in this lens. That is the type of thing, especially for the work that you're going to be doing with this type of lens, that makes a massive difference. Now for the dimensions and the size and everything, as you can tell, the 100 to 500 is going to have a little extra length on the 100 to 400, though if you include the RF adapter, that is actually going 
going to make it longer. Other than that, pretty similar dimensions. At their widest, they're going to have the same exact barrel diameter at about 3.7 inches. And they both have the same front diameter size with the 77 millimeter filter thread. Layout and the placement of everything coming from lens to lens, they look similar, though there are some minor changes going on there. Starting from the mount, we're going to lose that little focus window that's so signature. We're ditching that for the new sleek control ring assignable in camera to a few different functions. And I feel like that's like their new signature feature. And I'm not crazy about the assignable control ring. I don't find myself using it on these RF lenses very much. Why that is so exciting for me is that that is actually going to bump up all these lens controls a little bit further down the lens, which I think is a much more ergonomic place to put them. Quick blurb about these tri tripod rings on the EF lens. The tripod ring itself does not come off, but the tripod foot does come off and this actually gives it a piece of functionality over the RF lens. Pretty small thing here, but taking that tripod foot off the EF lens actually still reveals a little quarter 20 mount right there. When you remove the tripod ring off the RF version, you are removing your only points of mounting on the entire lens. Pretty small, but something to consider. And now as we make our way up the lens, now you're gonna see some changes in the spacing and layout of things. Like for example, we get a much slimmer grip area for the focusing ring on the RF first off, but then after that, there's just like this large area of just sort of like plain housing. But that also allowed for the space for all these lens controls to be on this part of the lens, like I said earlier. And then it's the smooth tight ring where on the EF lens, you can see that the focus grip is just much larger and it's sort of has like that little taper up and the smooth tight ring immediately follows that. And then on both lenses, moving up the lens from there is pretty similar. Same size grip area for the zoom grip, although you'll notice the EF has this little line sort of going through. It goes all the way to the end of the housing of the lens pretty much. And both lenses are going to have that signature Canon L red ring and all that lens info on the top. Although the RF really like slims that all down and sort of minimalizes it. And then the rest is history. So like my main takeaway away right when I started this process was the weight difference. It was just such a strikingly different experience, which ultimately brings me to the point, mainly they're able to shed all that weight by really reconfiguring how the focusing is done in this lens. Canon seems to have developed sort of like a hybrid system between the old STM and USM mechanics, but don't get it twisted. This along with every other RF is completely focused by wire compared to the mechanical focus thrower that you're getting on the EF glass. Class. massive experience difference. And whatever those changes were and those new developments that they made, they absolutely gave way to two massive things on the performance front, autofocus and stabilization. So for autofocus, I've got to say that the EF 100-400 held up surprisingly well in these side-by-side. -side. Yes, the RF lens is a tad bit more responsive, a little less likely to get confused, but all the settings are the same throughout. And I tried to get some stuff at 400 millimeters and 100 millimeters. Now for stabilization, remember that part I said about being delightfully surprised? Well, that absolutely happened when testing out the stabilization from lens to lens here. So it's weird. It's like, it's clear to tell that the 100 to 500 has made some improvements in the lens stabilization. Like just based off that, it works better. But I actually found that the weight of the 100 to 400 was greatly improving my handheld experience compared to the same shot at 400 on the RF lens. So I thought that was quite interesting. So maybe there is something to be said about having a slightly heavier setup if you're relying on lens stabilization at these super long focal lengths. I don't know. So we've talked about how these two lenses are different on paper. I've shared with you some of the things that you can't necessarily tell just by looking at these lenses. And I know for those very reasons, a lot of people like to stick to their old DSLR setup. They have just got it in their head that this weight gives it some added robustness. Weight also helps with stabilization in a way, but if I'm shooting a gig for more than four hours, I'm going for the setup that is like an entire pound lighter with extra zoom. Now, another major difference that I said I would revisit, I was really hard pressed to switch over to lenses that focused by wire. I just never felt that I was able to gauge where they wanted to focus. I've got to say the focus by wire experience I had on this lens was absolutely the best I've had on any mirrorless type lens, which is a really important thing when you're trying to get the lens to differentiate focus between like 
30 and 36 feet. Last couple things here, and I suppose this is just part of the character of using this lens, but on both lenses, that will happen, where if you have the smooth tight ring all the way on smooth, the lens barrel will just like fall out if you just point the lens down. But I suppose that's just Part of the experience. And with that, everybody, that is going to do it on this video. Drawing a couple of contrasts between an older and a newer version of essentially the same lens. It was really fun to compare these two lenses. This 100 to 500 is a Canon shooter's dream if you need this focal length range. In next week's video, I'm going to be talking all about this little guy, this. EOS R8. Stay on the lookout for that one, which by the way, is going to be a lot easier to do so if you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. That, if you didn't know, is gonna keep you notified whenever we post new content, which is every week. So people, where do you fall on the line of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and feverishly flocking to the new piece of gear no matter what it is? Let me know down below, and we'll see you in the next one.